chapter 10. scripture. I know I preached it recently, amen, but I want to preach it from a little bit different perspective, amen. And I want to entitle this message, message Exhortation to Spiritual Battles. Exhortation to Spiritual Battles, amen. The word of the Lord exhorts us, amen to wage spiritual battles and lately it seems like brother Mark Morgan again was correct amen a lot of people dumb down amen what church is really about but I want us to understand amen what's going on if you don't already or let me start from Verse chapter 6 it says, Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as a servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And he masters to the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Amen. If we can go to the Lord in prayer. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for everything you're doing in this place, Lord God. Lord, continue, Lord God, and by, Lord God, in this church, Lord God, and strengthen us, Lord God, this morning, Lord let your anointing flow, flow, Lord God. Just continue to help us, Lord God. And thank you for all the blessings. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You can all be seated. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And like I said, it's going to be a little bit of teaching, probably preaching. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 73, 6. It says, my heart, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. How do you obtain spiritual strength in preparation for a battle? Amen. Ephesians 6.10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. That's how you obtain strength in the preparation is being strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Right there is telling us, amen, to put on the whole armor doesn't say amen to put on half the armor. It doesn't say amen to put on one part of the armor. If you can just picture in your mind, amen, I was going to bring an analogy, but I don't think we have uh, enough people. I wasn't sure if the kids were going to be here, amen. But if you think about a battle, Brother West, and uh, the way they used to do it, it's not like here where you can probably have one man and take out a whole probably about 20 people with just one gun. But back then, they had battle, amen. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat. They, they had, amen, the, the, the breastplate, amen. They had the shield. They had a, a sword of different lengths. They, they had a helmets in case something was gonna, gonna take a blow to the head, amen. But just imagine that, that an army didn't have enough uh, equipment and you see one person only have a shield, nothing else but just a shield. And then uh, you skip a few people and um, you see one person with a sword and, and that's all he has. And you skip another few people, amen, and, and you see somebody with a breastplate. I, I wouldn't really want to fight in that army against uh, another army. Exactly. 
Amen. I don't know if you would be crazy enough to fight in that army, amen, but that's kind of like where uh, the church is going nowadays, amen. Uh, some people might have a little faith here and there. Some people might have uh, this gift in here, but you don't really see the whole operation of the gifts of the spirit, amen. You don't see a lot of people, amen, fighting for a cause in this day and hour. That's why the Lord tells us, amen, to put on the whole armor of God because not only should you have the whole armor, but everybody around you should have the whole armor, amen. And if I if I told somebody to, to have my back in war, I, I would want him to be fighting with a sword, amen, in hand. I, I wouldn't want him to just start throwing punches, amen, at the enemy because that's not going to do anything for me, amen. Uh, they, they would probably get destroyed, amen, and, and me probably get stabbed in the back sooner than I think, amen. I would want somebody to have all the armor in preparation for battle. Amen. But more than that, I would want, amen, or I would hope that the people I'm fighting for know how to use their weapons. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 The word of the Lord or some notes says Paul borrowed the armor of the Lord motive from the prophet Isaiah who often described Jehovah as the Lord of hosts who avenge his people. This was not armor designed and possessed by Christians but was the Lord's armor. The phrase be strong both echoes Jehovah's words to Joshua as he was sent to continue the mission of Moses and lead Israel into the promised land, as well as Zechariah's words regarding God's promise to make those who return from Babylon exile strong in the Lord, in the Lord Zechariah 10, 12. Paul's congregation had arrived at a similar amen, moment in which the redemption drew nigh. Unlike soldiers who fought behind walls or on horses, the foot soldier donned a complete array of armor, allowing him to fully engage the enemy while having protection from an attack that would come from any side. Amen. This is also, amen, it parallels as putting on the new man in Ephesians 4, 24, amen. When you put on a new creature, amen, when you become a new creature in Christ, it's, it's kind of similar, amen. You, you want that person that has that armor to know that he's not only well equipped, but he knows how to use it, amen. He, he's ready for the battle. He's strong, amen. Uh, he has been preparing, amen, for some, for a wage of war. Hallelujah, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. I want to know that these people, amen, that are by my side in war, amen, uh, are, are complete, amen, are strong, are ready, amen, uh, to face any attack from any side, amen, uh, to face, amen, of the enemy, amen, storms this side. Uh, I want those men to know, amen, or I want to know that those men uh, are ready for battle, amen. Uh, if they come from behind, amen, I want to know, amen, if I'm not looking behind, uh, that somebody's vigilant, amen, uh, to know what's going on. Uh, if they come from the front, I want to know, amen, uh, that we all have our eyes, amen, set on the enemy, amen. 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 We are going to be strong and, and powerful. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, Ephesians 4, 22, 24, amen. It's talking about preparing your body for God's armor. Amen. Verse 12 says, amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. I hear a lot of people bashing Obama, and to them, amen, if, if, if they want to do that, 
That's on them, amen. Uh, but the real thing is we're not fighting against Obama, amen. Uh, the real thing is we're not really fighting against, amen, uh, leaders, but we're fighting against something, amen, uh, that they're giving their ears to, my God. It's, we, we know, amen, uh, that we're not just going to go and put up our armor, amen, in the spirit, amen, and, and smash down the governments, my God. Uh, but something's got to give, amen, in this day and hour, amen. I remember Brother Driscoll saying that a lot of our Pentagon officials uh, get psychics and, and they get readings, amen, from, from uh, psychics and, and these uh, readers and, and, and these people, amen, because they understand, amen, that they're fighting against God's army. They understand that they have a war. They're not dumb. They know, amen, uh, what they have to do to get their things done, amen, from the voices of hell. Amen. But more, amen, than anything, we have to know where we get our voices from, amen, our voice from, amen. Uh, we got to understand, amen, that we got to give an ear to God, amen, amen um, and the things that he is capable amen. of. Because if we don't, we will lose the battle when it's all said and done. That's it. We have too many people nowadays wrestling against flesh and blood. We have too many people bickering uh, with one another in the church, amen. Uh, we have people, amen, that can't even talk, amen, uh, to somebody in the other side of town, amen, from a, a different church. I was just talking to a minister, amen, uh, from a different city, and he says it's sad because we both preach the same thing, amen. Uh, maybe our standards are not there, amen. Uh, he said, but I'm tired of us, amen, not being able to fellowship with our brothers and our sisters, amen, in the Lord. Uh, how else are we going to, amen, win a city for God uh, if we can't trust, amen, uh, the ones that preach the gospel, amen, uh, the ones, amen, that proclaim it, my God. Uh, amen, amen. It's getting quiet in here. Come on, preach. Amen. That's the reason many times we are failing, amen, because we give, amen, about 99% of our ears to gossip, amen, and, and who did what, and how they did it, amen, and, and how their life might be messed up, amen, and, and I've heard it before, amen, just watch them, and in a couple of years, you'll see uh, that they will go through this, and, and they'll end up like this, amen, uh, Am I preaching this morning? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We have plenty of time, amen, bickering about our coworkers and about how, amen, the job could be better. I've been there, amen. There's times where I do get tired. Amen. But many times we're, we're, we're giving, amen, our attitudes, amen, we're giving our time to frustrations and things, amen, that bother us. We're giving, we're yielding, amen, to our flesh with entertainment. And when it's all said and done, we are fighting against flesh and blood. Amen. Second Corinthians 10, if we can all turn there. Verse 1, it says, Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. <clears throat> but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against, against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we, are, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Verse 3, for we wrestle or for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. Paul is trying to say, we, yes, we, we are here. We are human. We are walking, amen, this walk of humanity. But we shouldn't be warring after the flesh, amen. Amen. There you go. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. How else, church, are we going to pull down these strongholds if you're just fighting your flesh all the time? How else are you going to pull down the strongholds in this city, amen, uh, if all you're doing is, is wagering warfare, amen, on cardinality, my God. I'm, I'm talking to a church, amen, that understands what it is to move through the spirit, my God. Uh, I'm talking to people, amen, that know what it is to get on their knees and pray before God and humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, amen. And, but you see, sometimes we we just get too complacent in our walk with God. And sometimes uh, we look at other people and we say they will do the job, amen, uh, when it requires everybody to get involved, when it requires unity in the spirit, my God, because the Bible says, amen, a house divided divided against itself, or I, be, I believe it was a saying, a house divided against itself cannot stand, amen, it amen. will fall, amen, and right. that's why we preach, amen, that everybody should be on their knees praying, amen, amen. everybody should be on their knees, amen, with their voices amen. loud, amen. hallelujah, Jesus, amen, amen. Paul so, saying, amen, that's the way you're going to pull down the strongholds. Amen. Have we not been fighting, amen, amen, for several years for this city? Amen. Oh. Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah, oh. Jesus. Mighty God, mighty Verse 13, God. amen, going back to Ephesians. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, it says it again, <clears throat> that ye may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And having done all, to stand, amen. Come on. Psalms 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, man. What happens when you stand for the Lord, man? It says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Going on with verse 14. Amen. Are you all with me? Yes. I know I'm kind of Jesus. going back and forth, but I said it was going to be a little bit of teaching. Amen. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. John 3.21 says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. Truth and light go hand in hand. To gird up one's loins was preparing for something. Amen. Example is preparing for a battle. You read the scripture many times. Amen. It says, gird up your loins. Amen. Sometimes it was just being a man, get ready for that battle, amen. Get ready for what's going to happen in your life. Amen. And allow the maneuverability, flexibility to fight as a soldier. Girding up your loins in truth protects you, ties you to truth, amen. It allows you to fight in every which way, angle, amen. You need to move in the spirit, amen. Uh, it, it was almost, I know some people say it was like a, a bout, amen. Uh, but it was more, amen, just tying your garments, amen, up into a knot, amen. Uh, allowing your feet to go in the enemy because you didn't want to trip, amen. Back then, I know they had different garments on, amen. But back then, they had... I don't know what you call it. it was, they were pretty long, but when they were going to go up into battle or go to the loins, they had to pretty much pick them up and wrap them around their legs, and that's when you knew they were ready for battle. That's good. Yeah, come on. Jesus. Amen. Come on. That's why the word of the Lord says, "Gird up your loins in truth," Jesus. because it protects you. Amen. Yes. 
It ties you to truth, amen. And allows you to find in every which angle you need to move in the spirit, my God, amen. Uh, when the enemy throws, amen, twisted scripture this way, 